Hello everyone. In this short video, I'm going to lay out some background information from my application of category theory in linguistics. In the description area below, you can find links to a blog post based on this video, as well as an extended abstract for the case study I will mention by the end. Please join me in the virtual poster session or leave me a comment if you're interested in my work. So, I will go through four points in this video. In the beginning, I will quickly delineate the scope of my research within linguistics. Then, I will introduce my research topic in more detail, which has to do with grammatical types. Next, I will introduce an important observation about grammatical types in human language. That is, various theoretical ideas about them can be neatly put on a five-level ladder of abstraction. And this ladder of abstraction will naturally lead us to the fourth and main point of my research. Namely, we can think about grammatical types and their abstract ontological structures from a category theoretic perspective. In this background explainer video, I won't go into the detail of this perspective, but if you're interested, do take a look at my blog post or extended abstract. In short, my study shows that category theory can potentially help theoretical linguists flesh out the formal details of a number of existing ideas about grammatical types. And it can also help us formulate some interesting predictions about human language. Modern linguistics is a vast field encompassing many subfields. My subfield is theoretical linguistics, which means my job is to observe and explain human language as natural phenomenon. Human language has a bunch of aspects that can be theoretically studied. In my area of study, it's syntax. That is, the component of our language capacity that allows us to assemble individual words and phrases into well-formed sentences. There are a number of theoretical schools and frameworks in the study of syntax. And the framework I'm working with is generative grammar. And more specifically, the Chomsky school of it. Any theory of human language syntax must have a module about the rules that assemble words into sentences, aka narrow syntax, and a module about the words themselves, aka the lexicon. It is the latter module that I am applying category theory to. More exactly, my research interest lies in the structure and organization of word classes or grammatical types within the mental lexicon of human beings. These classes or types are more standardly called syntactic categories by working linguists. But since the term category already has a different meaning in the context of this conference, I'm gonna use the less usual term grammatical type instead. Well, these are just different names of the same thing. An important merit of the Chomsky School of Generative Grammar is that it goes into the subtle semantic details of human language. And this is reflected in the large number of grammatical types linguists have proposed. Grammatical types in the Chomsky framework may either have overt phonological forms or merely silently contribute to semantic interpretation. Take English for example. Overt grammatical types in English include the familiar major word classes as well as some minor word classes. These are the visible building blocks of English grammar. Silent grammatical types, on the other hand, include types that express subtle grammatical meanings or regular grammatical relations. While many other theoretical frameworks either ignore or abstract away from grammatical types without overt forms, the Chomsky framework takes them seriously and treats them as an invisible yet integral part of human language grammar. Now, since there are a large number of subtle grammatical types and functions attested in world languages, many of which are totally bizarre to someone whose job isn't to stare at languages under the microscope every day, a legitimate question is, is the grammatical type inventory for human language a plain set or a structured set? If it's a structured set, what is its structure? Although no linguistic studies have been dedicated to the detailed structure of the grammatical type inventory, Various independently proposed ideas about it present us with an approximate picture. A crucial part of this picture is a structure with multiple levels of abstraction. Now, let's envision these abstraction levels as lenses that allow us to peek inside the inventory. Then our field of vision at each level is different. At the first and lowest level of abstraction, we can see an individual grammatical type at a time together with its internal makeup. We can freely move around at this level, but at each locus we move to, we can only see a single type. 
At the second level of abstraction, we can see a particular ordered set of grammatical types at a time. Such an ordered set is called a hierarchy of projection or an extended projection in Chomskyan terminology. And all grammatical types within an ordered set like this belong to the same major part of speech. Next, as we zoom out onto the third level of abstraction, our field of vision includes not a single extended projection, but a particular set of them. These are the major parts of speech that together define the structured part of a language's grammatical type inventory. And since different languages may have different grammatical types or even different parts of speech, as we move around at this level of abstraction, what we see are essentially different language varieties. Let's keep zooming out and ascend to the fourth level of abstraction where our field of vision is no longer blocked by language boundaries. At this level, we can see all possible combinations of extended projections in human language. In other words, we can now talk about all possible natural languages, be it a language as common as English, a language as exotic as that spoken in the remote Greenlandic village, or a language as transient as that representing a particular stage of development in a child's acquisition process. So here we basically have the God's perspective, but that's not yet the end of our ladder of abstraction, because we can ascend higher onto a fifth level. From this level, we can see not only the structured part of human language, but also its unstructured part, which accommodates grammatical types like the logical operators and the purely idiosyncratic roots of vocabulary items. At this highest level, we can reasonably ignore the ontological structures from the lower levels. In the meantime, another kind of structure finally becomes visible to us, namely the structure that organizes all grammatical types of all sizes into a derivation system. In fact, all previous applications of category theory in linguistics have targeted this derivational level. But in the Chomsky framework, we can delve deeper into the ontological levels as well. There are no intrinsic conflicts between the two approaches. What's more, they actually complement each other. The conceptual tools in category theory allow us to precisely and systematically formalize a bunch of linguistic ideas, which are currently only discussed informally. A biggest advantage and potential attraction of category theory for theoretical linguists is its unparalleled ability and flexibility in dealing with complex systems with multiple levels of abstraction. So, as far as my research is concerned, even though questions at each individual level of abstraction could probably be tackled with other tools, when our aim is to formally characterize the grammatical type inventory as a whole, category theory becomes the most convenient mathematical tool. At the current stage of my research, I haven't resorted to any advanced concepts, but even the most basic ones like object and morphism prove to be very helpful. In particular, the category theoretic perspective allows us to view each level of abstraction from the second level on as a category, whose objects are the structural units at that level, and morphisms are connections across those units, since not every mathematical configuration is linguistically meaningful, and not every linguistic idea is readily formalizable. Much interdisciplinary work can be done here. For example, my submission to ACT 2020 focuses on the third level of abstraction and uses the category theoretic idea of a junction to rule out a particular kind of grammatical type. A few empirical and conceptual arguments have been raised in the literature against such grammatical types, but the category theoretic perspective offers a rigorous formal argument. While this is only a very specific case in a rather large area of study, it demonstrates the kind of interesting and valuable insights category theory may bring into theoretical linguistics in general and generative grammar in particular. This is the end of my video. If you're curious about the detail of the category theoretic perspective on the human language grammatical type system, or the particular case study I've done about impossible grammatical types, you can now go to the description area and click the links there. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.